hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Anime Chan. My name is Katie and we are continuing the slime marathon. For those of you that don't know, I'm going to be binge watching a lot of slime over the next couple of days. Which for me just means instead of one video per week per anime, I will be posting a lot of that time I was reincarnated as a slime videos because I want to catch up by the time the new episode airs. I will do my best to also keep up with, uh, let's say, Konosuba and other anime that I'm reacting to, so hopefully I'll be able to post two videos some days, but for the most part right now, that time I got reincarnated as a slime is very important. For the main reason that I really love the anime, it's a lot of fun to watch, and I'm very interested to know where this story with Shizu is going. She's a very unique character, in my opinion, in an anime like this. And maybe I'll talk a little bit more about why she is unique, in my opinion, later in the anime. I, I don't know her character enough right now to say for sure, so I'm going to be catching up and sharing my opinions on the characters when I learn more about them. Without further ado, Thank you for being here. Let's watch the episode together. Okay. Episode 8 Inherited World. Oh, so that's the one that killed Veldora. Why do they look so similar? She has the side ponytail of death. Oh, 
集したいのか会って確かめたいことがあったのでも。私は静江。ミカミ。伊沢静。Sorry, death night flashback。私を食べて。私にかけられた。まるであの男のよう。幸せな夢を見られるように。Interesting concept. Sad. But I mean, I didn't know her for very long. So I guess I'm okay with this.
Giving him a whole new purpose. This lone slime at the center of it all. Wow. I'm going to start off by reading some of the comments. I love reading the comments because I love doing like reaction videos and highlight reactions. But it's not like live, a live watch with me because I can't get that instant talking about the episode. Like, if you think about it, it's just me talking to the camera now yes I know that later many people will watch it and listen and then they'll have opinions to share with me but right now I don't have that instant let's talk about the episode like that is one of the best parts about watching anime and uh, that's why I love the comment section because it feels like people watched with me and are replying right now we're talking about it <laughs> I'm sad and pathetic I know anyway Gildo Ganon, Eternal Lord of Darkness. Okay, is that from the manga? Let's ignore her death. This anime could work you as a great game. Huh? I'm not crying. I just got dirt in my eye. At the very least, least that's what their son would have looked like. Oh, if they had a son. No. Okay, yeah, that's that's the one thing that needs to be talked about in this episode is. Shizue's death. Fuck. I thought... <laughs> oh, she's going... She's going to be a big, important character. But... Uh, then... she I mean, she's an important character. But not in the way that I expected, I guess. But this does give the story more purpose. And Rimuru used that word too. Purpose. Because he reincarnated into this new world... And now he's setting up this whole village for himself and, you know, helping people. But now he's got this purpose. And that's something we all need in life. Like, I think about it a lot. Often, we oscillate, and that's one of my favorite Eng English words, we oscillate between knowing what our purpose is and, you know, just going on with life. Like... There, I don't know if there's anyone, but I'm not, I don't every moment of every day think about my purpose. Like there's times and days when I'm just, I just kind of live my life and I have dreams and I try and attain those dreams. But I am aware of uh, a purpose that I have with my life and how I want to go about realizing like a purpose isn't something I feel that you finish one day it's something that guides your choices every day but even though I have a purpose and that's how I or by what I love my life I'm not always sometimes you kind of just go about doing the things and you kind of oscillate between being aware of your purpose and and just living, being aware of your purpose and living, getting on with, you know, the day-to-day -day things. And I feel like Rimuru was, you know, he, he had, he was going on with his day-to-day -day things, having goals, but now he has a strong sense of purpose. And, okay, uh, the recording stopped, but it's back up now. What was I talking about again? 
purpose um, and the importance thereof in our lives and the oscillating between having a purpose and then also because a purpose kind of makes you think like it's an inspiration it's something that drives you every day but we're not inspired and driven 100% of every day if that makes sense so it's important to have a purpose and to remind yourself of it constantly. And I don't think a purpose, I, or I, let's not say I don't think, but it's more like, um, the, my story has no points. I'm just babbling and talking about what this episode has made me think of. A purpose isn't something I feel, I'm not, I'm not saying this is a fact or anything, obviously I'm just musing. A purpose isn't something I feel like you find one day or you decide on or you are given it can be something that you're given but then it's it's more of it's not an inspiration necessarily because uh, i feel like an inspiration comes from within whereas a, if someone gives you a purpose then it's it's more like a, something from without so I, I feel like there might be um better purposes than others could be um but anyway i don't think a purpose is something that you get one. I feel, I feel like I wonder if a purpose is something that you're born with and then you discover it's from within as you gain self-awareness as you grow up because we're not born with self-awareness. We develop it, kind of, I think. Our human selves, anyway. So then you're born with this purpose and then you develop self-awareness but the problem where the problem comes in oftentimes we develop self-awareness but immediately we're trained by society and our parents and and everything around us to think and and behave and do in a certain way and approach life in a certain way so the moment we gain self-awareness we already kind of give it up and by doing that, we kind of forget our purpose that we were born with. The reason I tell you this is because so often we, we feel, and I, I mean for a long time, I felt like very empty and purposeless. And what that ended up doing was, quote, uh, but I don't know who, when you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. So I, I didn't, I, I kind of lost awareness of, of or never, took a hold of or even knew that I could discover my own purpose I kind of just went with whatever people wanted for me and when I was for example when I was living with my parents they wanted me to be a, a specific thing and fit into a specific mold so I kind of shaped myself into that and then after and they wanted me to study English I'm um, not English but uh, to be a teacher and I just chose English because it was the only thing I would have been willing to teach. So I just kind of found a way to make myself happy and them happy, but you know, more them and just try to fit myself, you know, like compensate. Like I tried to make them happy, but I also tried to keep myself sane. So that's why I chose, I was going to be an English teacher. Um, but then when I was, I was living by myself because I studied really far away and I didn't, I wasn't living with anyone. No one could impress their purpose upon me or their purpose for me upon me so for a long time I, be, I be, like their purpose was started I started realizing like this is not what I want and but what do I want and for, for not knowing what you want for so long not being aware of your purpose like that's it was confusing and scary and uh, then I got uh, I started dating someone after like four years or no three years of like being alone I started dating someone and suddenly their purpose, their dreams, I started, you know, conforming to that. It's a very, very long and complicated story, but the point is, I like how the story sets up his life, his new life. He had to die to gain, I mean, I'm not saying his life was meaningless before, but he did call his life uh, uneventful and da da da. And now through a lot of suffering, like he lost this person and, and through her suffering, his life has now gained a sense of purpose. 
And it's just very, very interesting to think about. Yeah, what did you guys think? Like, what stood out to you most in this episode? For me, clearly it was, it was a, the, the word purpose and how her death, which is essentially a very sad thing, led to something that I can already see will be a great story, if that makes sense. A great, like, through her death, he is now going to help a lot of people. Through her sadness, she ended up helping, feeling like the need to help a lot of people because oftentimes our lack, sense of lack, creates a lot of purpose in our lives. Like, she felt the need to, you know, help people and a lot, and her whole life was about that, helping people. And why was that? Because she herself wished to be helped, if that makes sense. So, for example, when we don't feel loved, we aim, we give so- Damn it, first the battery was flat and now the card was full and now I completely lost my train of thought. Damn it. I just had to delete a lot of stuff with the card to, to be able to keep recording. And now I forgot what I was talking about. I was talking about how essentially lack ends up creating or being part of our purpose not just lack but challenges the stuff that gets in our way actually like if you're born poor you have a, a lot of that's what creates the drive to attain riches and that gives you a lot of and that can be a, a part of what gives you purpose the difference comes in when you look at or you use your challenges to push you forward or hold you back. For example, Shizue could have lived her whole life angry at what had happened to her. Um, she could have, you know, become a hermit living in the woods, just taking care of herself, you know, being mad at the world and things didn't work out for her, she went through this awful childhood and da, 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 da. And yet, it was because of her lack, her challenges, her suffering, that she became who she was and she helped so many people. And now, through her living that life, Rimuru, her purpose has now become part of Rimuru's um, journey like obviously that's on his own like he's still going to govern his little village but now a part of that he's going to be helping people as well and helping those people she strove to help and yeah i just i think there's a lot to be learned from that so i would like to leave this question with you what in this episode stood out to you the most and um was i and was i just thinking way too deeply about all of this <laughs> So yeah, thank you guys for watching with me. I'm really looking forward to the next episode. Did not expect things to get this deep, but i um, loving it anyway. See you guys next time. Bye.